An inside look at Cristobal, courtesy of the Hurricane Hunters. This video, one of their most recent flights into the storm, currently dumping torrential rain on southern Mexico ahead of turning north to us here in the United States. We're breaking down Cristobal's weakening and its upcoming re-intensification here live on Tracking the Tropics. Hey there, everybody. In the bottom right-hand portion of your screen, JB Buno here with you live in our hurricane headquarters in Tampa, Florida. Cristobal now officially a tropical depression, but its impact still to be felt across the southeastern United States. Joining us here in the hurricane headquarters, Julie Phillips, WFA meteorologist in the top right-hand portion of your screen. In the bottom left, our featured meteorologist today and great friend of the program, Ed Bloodsworth, chief meteorologist at WKRG News 5, Mobile, Alabama. And of course, formerly here with us at WFLA News Channel 8. We'll be hearing from Ed, especially considering where the storm is heading. But we start with Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Holly standing by at the wall with the very latest on Cristobal. So Cristobal, as you said, JB, has weakened just as expected. In fact, everything is going as planned with Cristobal. It's very unorganized at this point. The mountains here in Mexico and Guatemala have really torn this storm apart. It's still dumping a lot of rain, though, in portions of southern Mexico near Guatemala, the Yucatan Peninsula. Remember, we're looking at clouds here on satellite, and there is just basically no organization to this storm at this point. Maximum sustained winds generously right now at 35 miles per hour and it still has a southward component to its movement at three miles per hour. But as we expect, it is going to move back into the Gulf of Mexico, but not for about 24 hours or more. The track, the latest track from the National Hurricane Center, the 11 a.m. advisory here, hasn't changed all that much. So we're still expecting that northward turn sometime late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Then we're going to see it remain over land, likely until tomorrow night. Then we're going to see it reemerge into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's when we're going to see that reorganization and the strengthening of those winds. So until then, the storm is going to remain disorganized and a tropical depression. Once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, it's going to tap into those warmer waters once again and then head for portions of the Gulf Coast states. This would include portions of Louisiana, maybe Mississippi, Alabama, and portions of eastern Texas as well. So all some Thing that we're going to be watching, but the timing here isn't until the end of the weekend. So we're still talking about a relatively slow moving storm with weaker steering currents, but that's the latest track at 11 a.m. Again, it's the updated track, but not much has changed. We're still expecting this to head north, re-strengthen into a tropical storm, and then make landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast states. The spaghetti models, they agree with that. We have this tight cluster. There aren't, uh, you know, a big blob of them heading in all directions. We are talking about pretty high confidence on where the storm will go. The only thing we don't have too much confidence right now is how strong it will be or how weak it will be. Right now we're thinking mid to high grade tropical storm status. So uh, 60 mile per hour winds right around that range as it approaches the Gulf Coast states. But the bigger story I think with this storm is going to be the rainfall and the flooding potential. This is a look at water vapor. This is the moisture associated with the storm right now, but see how far it extends. We're already seeing lots of tropical moisture here, basically in the entire state of Florida. We started with downpours yesterday. We're still getting those downpours today, and we're talking about heavy on and off downpours throughout the weekend all along the Gulf Coast states here, and that's because the widespread tropical moisture associated with this storm. So we're talking about a flooding potential, and I think that's going to be one of the bigger threats as we go forward into this weekend and as Cristobal makes its way toward landfall. I put the track on here to show you where it's expected to go, but then the colors here represent the amount of rainfall that we could see, and you can see that Cristobal is going to make landfall somewhere, maybe Louisiana, portions of Mississippi. Um, Alabama is not quite in the cone anymore at this point, but look at all of this rain expected through next Wednesday. It's all on the eastern side of this storm, so a very asymmetric storm expected going into this weekend. We've already got uh, flood watches in effect for portions of central and south Florida, and then flood warnings in effect for portions of the Mississippi River, and I'm sure Ed is going to be able to talk about that a little bit more as well. But if you're just joining us here, the latest on tropical now depression, Cristobal, is going to uh, continue to stay a depression over the next 
day or so before re-emerging into the Gulf of Mexico and strengthening before heading toward the Gulf Coast states, JB. Amanda Holly there in front of the wall here for us. Let's get to our featured meteorologist today, WKRG News 5. Chief Meteorologist Mobile, Alabama, Ed Bloodsworth, friend of the program, formerly here of WFLA, active member of the AMS, NWA, covered Matthew, Irma, and Michael. And hey, fun fact about Ed, everybody, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> he might just be the greatest weatherman bowler alive. Julie Phillips once told me that he could bowl a perfect game blindfolded. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I want to see that happen one day. Ed, Ed it's great to have you back uh, on the program. <laughs> okay, well, she was definitely bragging and, and, and exaggerating to the fullest extent, but it's good to be back with you guys. And, uh, and I, again, now it's a very busy time of the season, only uh, less than a week into the start here, Julie. I know. It's really incredible. We're already on the third named storm, and this is, what, June, what is today, June 3rd or June 4th? Um, so we're yeah. really just at the start. June is when things just really slowly start to heat up. The peak of the season isn't even until the end of August into the beginning of September. So this is... Uh, Expected to be a busy season, and it's starting off that way for sure. Ed, we're, we're of course seeing the track here, and we're keeping a very close eye on some of the states that could be impacted here by Cristobal, but you're there, of course, on the Alabama Gulf Coast, there in Mobile. What are you seeing there from WKRG? Well, you know, models have been a somewhat con pretty consistent here, panning out a, a north central Gulf Coast landfall with this system sometime on Sunday. And as Amanda was just showing the forecast track, the one thing I want to kind of reiterate to folks is when you look at that track, that's not an impact cone. That's just where the center of circulation is going to fall. It's going to fall somewhere in that point. But as we know, living on the Gulf Coast in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, we know that these systems can have major impacts outside of that forecast cone. So even if this storm does make a landfall in the central Louisiana coast, you know, our area in um, Mobile, northwest Florida, we're going to be on the eastern side, what's also called the dirty side of the storm, where we're going to get strong winds out of the south. And uh, and for us, it's really going to be the rain. Um, you know, the models there were pointing out around three to six inches of rain uh, widespread for our region, which has been also fairly consistent. We've been noting that in our forecast models here. And, uh, and even as into early next week, we're still going to be dealing with a good amount of rain. But also starting uh, tomorrow, uh, at the beaches, red flags are going to start going up, high risk of rip currents, and some of the wave activity has been forecasted to be around maybe 10 to 13 feet uh, just offshore. So, uh, so some minor beach erosion and coastal flooding could also become an issue. Three meteorologists here across your screen, everybody and myself. They'll use three meteorologists with plenty of experience covering hurricanes. For those of you just joining us, Amanda Holly, Julie Phillips, Ed Bloodsworth, I'm J.B. Buno here in the bottom right. Guys, we're talking about impact states. We see Louisiana right there in the middle of it. We see Mississippi, Alabama, even more inland. We're talking about Arkansas. Amanda, Julie, Ed, maybe we can get into some of the states that could be seeing the brunt of the remnants of uh, Cristobal. Or, again, is this going to become a tropical storm? Maybe we could maybe answer that first. Are we expecting that reintensification for tropical storm status or maybe even a low-end Cat 1? We are looking at the latest forecast track. Once this gets back over the warm Gulf waters, JB, that's when we'll start to see it re-strengthening again. So right now the center, the core of that system is over land, which is not conducive to a system strengthening. But once it does move north over the Gulf, then we'll see this slowly strengthening. Right now the forecast models have been fairly consistent in this being a stronger tropical storm when it makes landfall. And in terms of the impacts, like Ed was mentioning, the eastern side of the storm is a storm is where most of the bulk of the Deep moisture is so places like Texas would have very minimal impacts on this current track, whereas places like Florida, I mean, we already had a pretty wet day yesterday. We had areas that saw over four inches of rain and we're forecasting on enough heavy downpours through the end of this week, all the way through this weekend, even into the start of next week. So Florida, even though we're a long way away from those tropical storm force winds, it's just going to be a soggy forecast for us. Yeah, soggy forecast and was mentioning the risk of rip currents yeah. is high. There is a low risk for some storm surge, especially if you're in the Big Bend region of Florida, the Panhandle, and all the way as we get toward the center of the storm where that comes ashore. But otherwise, rainmaker here, flooding is a potential, and those rip currents. Ed, what about, uh, you're also, of course, covering Pensacola. I know we're talking about the Florida Panhandle here. What are we seeing on the Florida Panhandle as far as the storm? 
Well, starting tonight uh, and into tomorrow, uh, I've actually been looking at some of the uh, beaches now. Pensacola Beach, Navarre, Destin, all of those areas are going to start to see minor impacts from this actually starting tonight in the form of increased wave activity and the rip current activity. Yellow flags are up at the beaches today, but those will likely become uh, red flags tomorrow. So that means they're urging folks to stay out of the water and uh, perhaps we'll likely see some double red flags, meaning uh, some of the beaches may close for a short time uh, this uh, this weekend as a result of this. And, uh, you know, I, I was I'm glad you actually showed there on the water vapor imagery. There's a lot of dry air on the northwest side of this uh, circulation. And as this starts to move into the Gulf, you're not going to likely see this classic sort of, you know, very, you know, uh, very you know, the word I'm looking for, it's not going to look like a circle. It's not going to look like a completely organized tropical system, just sort of a big ball of thunderstorms, not a symmetrical system. That's what I'm trying to say. And I think as we start going through time, you're going to see the eastern side of this look much more impressive than the western side. So uh, por portions of Texas uh, areas are, are actually, you know, not too terribly far away from where this may uh, where this may actually make landfall may not see too much rain out of this because of that dry air that eventually may start to wrap into this circulation just a bit. Hey, Bloodsworth joining us from WKRG News 5 in Mobile, Alabama. Guys, let's go back to this video one more time from the Hurricane Hunters and we get kind of this eerie look inside what a storm looks like. I've been on one of these flights. I can tell you, you just get that, that spine tingling feeling when you're inside a storm of of this magnitude. Of course, crystal ball now a depression, not a tropical storm. But one of the things I want to ask about is our friends in Mexico, our friends uh, towards Central America, mm. everybody. I mean, we're talking about some major flooding going on right now there. And, and while this is not anywhere near as intense of a storm as Dorian, this also brings me back to last year with Dorian because Dorian sat on the Bahamas and just dumped so much rain. Now I'm getting the feeling that we're starting to see this storm kind of hover over land here now over the last 24 hours. So we're seeing a lot of flooding there in southern Mexico, right? Yeah, I've read reports of up to 30 inches potentially there in southern Mexico near Guatemala, San Salvador, and portions of that Yucatan Peninsula, which is not great for them. Um, there have been deaths reported down there due to that flooding. There's been pictures um, coming in on Twitter and video of just kind of roads washed away. And you can imagine as rain continues to fall, that ground just continues to get soggier. When do we expect the turn to begin? When are we expecting things to that northerly track, you guys? Unfortunately, you know, it is going to start to move off to the north and Cristobal is going to make its way away, but the moisture is going to linger down there in Central America. Uh, so they could be looking at rainfall continuing even as the storm moves away. Everybody, three meteorologists on your screen, they're going to be keeping a very close eye on Cristobal. And of course, we're always tracking the tropics here on the show, of course, the self-titled show that we're talking about here, everybody live streaming across the southeastern United States. Before we say farewell to WKRG's Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth, final word. Uh, final word is uh, this is it may not be the strongest system, but we need to take every single system seriously. And uh, this will uh, certainly bring some impacts. It might not be the strongest impact, but you know, even if this one doesn't cause an extreme amount of damage, just know that we're only in the first week of June. We're already on the sea storm, and we are forecasting an active season. So you need to just keep your guard up and make sure you tune into track in the tropics all season long. And, of course, for our viewers in the Mobile, Alabama, Pensacola, Florida market, be sure to watch on WKRG News 5. Look for Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth and the rest of our friends over there at WKRG, my former station. Hey, big shout out to, of course, our entire panel here for joining us here live. We're going to continue to monitor Cristobal. We'll be back at 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central here live tomorrow, that being Friday, June 5th here on Tracking the Tropics. For WFLA Meteorologist Julie Phillips and WFLA Meteorologist Amanda Holly and WKRG's Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth, I'm J.B. Buno. We'll see you soon, everybody, back here tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern, 1 o'clock Central. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.